This video was finished before the COVID-19 pandemic and anti-racism protests that occurred in Vancouver and around the world. These events highlight the need to ensure that all voices, particularly youth and other marginalized groups, have the opportunity to shape the future of the city. Join us in planning Vancouver together. If you live in Vancouver, you're probably getting to know this city pretty well. You've walked the streets, you've seen the sights, you've tried the sushi. But have you ever thought about changing things? Where would you even begin? Step one, understand that Vancouver can be changed. People have been shaping these lands for generations upon generations. In fact, thousands of years before it was even known as Vancouver, the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples established villages along the coastline in places like Hoi Hoi and Sanak. Then, with colonization, other people started making changes. For example, Donald Mann and William Mackenzie, who wanted to build their train station on uh, water, and boom, now we've got the Foss Creek Flats. Or W.S. Rawlings, who wanted to walk by the ocean or something, and wha-bam, we've got the seawall. Then there's Alfred James Tal Taylor, who didn't like swimming, so now we have the Lionsgate Bridge. I think that's how the story goes. Anyways, it's not just the big stuff. Pretty much everything in Vancouver is there because somebody decided it should be there. Each building, each sidewalk, each sign, whatever this is, you name it. All of that is to say your city is malleable. People like you and me have changed it, shaped it, added things and removed things in the past. And that could be you too. Step two, observe your city. Go outside and take a look around you. Notice the buildings, the streets, the trees, or anything else that catches your interest. Then look at the people. How are they interacting with these things? As you observe your city, you may notice that there are areas for improvement. Ask yourself what's working, what's not working, and what's missing. For example, this freeway works really well for cars, but it's not really comfortable to walk through. And these shops can be fun, but only if you have the money to spend inside them. Another way to think about this is to notice the places you love going to and the places you don't feel welcome in. Then ask yourself why you feel that way. Step three, ask the tough questions. Um, how do we adapt to climate change? Because in Vancouver, that means sea levels rising by one meter over the next century. During extreme storms, our city's coastline could go from this to this. How do we prepare for that? At the same time, a lot more people are moving to our region, like 1 million people by 2030. But there's only so much land and we're in the middle of a housing crisis. How do we fit more people here? Where do they live? And how do they get around? As we look ahead to the future, there are some big questions looming over our city. And whatever changes we make should keep that in mind. Allow yourself to think big and to think ahead, like seven generations ahead. What should Vancouver look like for our grandkids, grandkids, grandkids? Step 3.5, juice break. Step four, include others. In the past, people have also made some less good decisions about Vancouver. Exhibit A, tearing down the black neighborhood of Hogan's Alley to create the Georgia and Dunsmuir viaducts. Exhibit B, kicking out a Musqueam village to create Stanley Park. Now, there are many different reasons why these things happened. Colonialism, neoliberalism, racism, suburbanization, revitalization, and lots of other isms and Asians. But when you look at who made changes in Vancouver throughout its colonial history, it's clear that these decisions also have a thing in common. Suits, beards, mustaches. These changes were kind of made by the same people, and that meant many others were left out of these decisions. We've learned a valuable lesson from that. Whenever we change our city, we need everyone's perspectives at the table. Because at the end of the day, Vancouver isn't just about you or any one person. It's about all the people that have lives here. Step five, bring out the jackhammer. Just kidding. Step five, make a Vancouver plan. Right now, your local government is making a plan for the future of Vancouver. They're observing our city, asking the tough questions, and well, they really can't do it alone. So whether you live, work, or whatever you do in the city, I hope you can help them answer these tough questions and share your wildest ideas for a city that works for everyone. No suits, beards, or mustaches necessary. Or power tools for that matter. Because at the end of the day, the best tool for changing your city 
is a plan. <laughs> Help shape the city you want. Join us in planning Vancouver together.